Happy Thursday, good evening, it's me again. Um, I'm doing another review tonight. This time it's Pink Sugar by Aquilina. Um, they are an Italian cosmetics company. Um, I don't really know where to put them actually in my playlists. They don't really fit into anything so I'm just going to put them under designer women's. I know it's wrong but what are you going to do? So uh, firstly I need to thank, sorry, somebody, uh, a fragrance I remember called Dawny Sparkle really cool name I think and um, she very kindly did a giveaway and I happened to win this so this was a prize basically so I'm glad I'm getting to review it Donnie Sparkle if you're watching thank you this review is for you I forgot to say as well this is my hundredth video happy birthday to me let's have a little bit of spritz of perfume around the room happy birthday perfumery birthday to me I don't know I had plans to do like a huge samsara thing maybe I'll do that next but Anyway, 100th video, quite an achievement I think. Um, so Thanks. yeah, this is a floral fruity gourmand. It came out in either 2003 or four. I'm not sure, I've done my research and I can't really get a definite answer. Um, that Aquilina website is all in Italian, so even after translating it all, I, I still couldn't really find out when it was from. But anyway, it's around that time. Um, this is it. This fragrance kind of, you can already tell what this is going to be, it does what it s says on the tin. Tin? No, not tin. I think it's cardboard, but yeah. It looks like a candy cane, it's swirly, it's sparkly, it's got little swirlies on it, and it's called Pink Sugar. What can it smell like, I wonder? Um, it's actually a little bit more interesting than you'd think, um, I think anyway. So. This is the packaging, as I've just shown you. I've got the, this is a little 30ml one. It's an eau de toilette. There are a couple of different variations of it. I think there's about five kind of flankers of it. You've got uh, uh, Pink Sugar Sensual and Pink Sugar Sparks. And there's a gold one, Pink Sugar Gold. And then there's, I think there's like a, an extract one, like an extract super strong one. Uh, there's also Blue Sugar for men, which I have a sample of. So I will be reviewing that at some point. So yeah, it's like it's like it's in a tube. It comes off. Of that. I actually just lost this. I sat down and went like that, and it literally disappeared. But I managed to find it. It was over there, behind my wardrobe. I don't know how that even happened. Maybe fairies took it. I don't know. So here's the bottle. It kind of it's designed to look like there's you know ribbons around it and stuff. Um, swirly on the top. Kind of reminds me of a candy cane. It reminds me of like Willy Wonka. It's supposed to be fun, girly, you know, it's not hiding any secrets, calling itself pink sugar. You know, it's not like it's going to smell like resins and, you know, plants and things like that. So, the top notes of it are bergamot, um, which is a, you know, orangey citrus fruit that's inedible. Fig leaf, that one really surprises me. Fig leaf I absolutely love. I think it's really, really interesting. It kind of almost smells like buttery greenness um, in the fragrances that I've smelt it where it's very predominant, but in this it really isn't. Um, Sicilian orange. Well done, Italian company, keeping to your roots. A Sicilian orange. And then raspberry. The heart notes are licorice. Um, us Londoners call it licorice, but it's actually pronounced licorice. You know, it's that kind of, I wouldn't even call it candy really, it's that black, strange, gummy, I love the flavour of it, but it's kind of verging on not sweet, even though it is sweet. Lily of the Valley, strawberry, um, cotton candy, or over here we call it candy floss, and red fruits. It doesn't really say what it is, this is from their website. And then the base notes are um, more sweet stuff, caramel, musk, tonka, vanilla and wood. It doesn't really say what kind of wood it is either, so, and to be honest, I couldn't really tell you. It's very soft, so I'm guessing it may be sandalwood, I don't know. But anyway, I'll spray it uh, on this hand. It's been drying here, as always, my reviews always follow some sort of template. I'm a little bit OCD in that way. So I'm just going to pause my camera while I spray it and then I'll come back because my camera cuts me off after eight minutes and it's really annoying. So, okay, I'll speak to you in a minute. Mm. So, it's wet now, so it's, um, 
my first impressions of this are it smells exactly like a combination of um, burnt sugar but I don't mean kind of burnt as in blackened to a cinder I mean you know like slight, slightly burnt sugar caramel you know is essentially made of kind of burnt sugar and butter and condensed milk but this this doesn't really smell like caramel to me the burnt sugar element kind of just smells like something a little bit burnt and sweet the licorice is huge huge it's it's almost as strong as the burnt sugar kind of smell I don't get any kind of uh, fig leaf fig leaves as I said you know before it's a really I don't know it's a really unusual kind of ferny green buttery smell and I don't get any of that in this it does smell fruity it's kind of like smooth red berries burnt sugar and licorice that's what I get from it um, I don't I don't really get you know lily of the valley is a, is quite a a strong distinct flower you know it's used to scent a lot of air freshers things like that so it can probably take over things and make things smell very very floral but this doesn't really smell floral to me it's more about the gourmand side of it rather than the even though it's a floral fruity gourmand this is more about the fruity and the gourmand than anything else so yeah it's I, I like it I mean it's it's kind of like a toothache in a bottle you really need to smell it close to be able to appreciate the notes because when this hits the air then it just becomes this huge pink cloud of just I don't know just pink frou-frou I don't know it's just frou-frou is a really weird word but let me just read you out from what their website says of their description of what this is and then you'll know what I mean by like by frou-frou it's like frilly tutu fluffy stuff so it says a fragrance that evokes the, wor the world gently sweetened, soft and fluffy cotton candy. A pink world, deeply feminine, but fresh and modern. Fresh? No. Modern, I guess, because a lot of fragrances now are very sweet and candy-like, so I guess that's right. Uh, then it says, embellished by turning around the candy childhood. I don't know what that means at all, but... It just sounds a bit fluffy to me. Um, then it says, The fragrance, a unique experience where dream and reality intertwine. A meeting between childhood and womanhood. The first memories are also the ones that leave an impression. The nostalgia, cotton candy flavoured raspberry, a touch of green fig leaf emphasised by the citrus notes of orange and bergamot from Sicily. It's a whole lot of jumble of mess to me really, but yeah. So anyway, back to the review. Um, the licorice, oh, oh, I'm so tempted to say licorice. The licorice holds on all the way throughout and it does m stop this from being just an entire pink sugar bomb of candy floss. The candy floss really starts to come through. Um, even though candy floss is a very subtle flavour, I think when it's recreated or synthesised to be in a fragrance, it's it is the main player so it's just crazy because when you've got a base that is as sweet as caramel tonka and vanilla together and an already sweet fragrance dries down into something that's even more sweet I just want to go to the dentist I just think that you're gonna have to really really like your sweet fragrances this does evoke images of you know little girls wearing tutus at their birthday party eating cake that's just what it feels like to me although anyone can wear it I have it and I probably will wear it I, I don't care but yeah you have an already sweet fragrance that dries down into an even more sweet fragrance so it's really dry here and here is where I can really smell it becomes a tinge of licorice and then it just goes vanilla caramel Tonka. Tonka is kind of slightly almondy, but also vanilla-y as well, so it's just a whole lot of sugar going on. And that's probably why they called it that, and wrapped it up in a pink ribbon, and a bow, and a candy cane box, and everything else that you can think of pink and fluffy. So that is my review of Aquilina Pink Sugar. 
Um, this is going to go back on my shelf and I will wear it one day when I'm just feeling nostalgic and young and in a fun mood I guess. So thanks very much for watching and if you like my reviews click the little subscribe thing which would be probably here at some point and it'll probably be in pink as well because I'm going to do them in pink in honour of this lovely fragrance. Thanks for watching and good night.